Hey guys, still here and welcome back to more Wargame Red Dragon Ranked. Um, a very quick one, as you can see. And this is for me the first time that I had a game that was this quick. Um, this is against Private Park Moss, and we are playing on Punchbowl. My plan is to move to Bravo, as you can see over there. Um, this is one of those games, by the way, where I am recording it around... Well, where I'm doing the narration after the fact. So I recorded it, um, and you're looking at the live footage. Which means I cannot intervene with uh, scrolling, zooming, and anything like that. But I will try to highlight things that I think went well, and highlight things that I think I need to do better. My plan here is to go to Bravo. It's the thing that I just kind of uh, circled. And I'm going to go there with a couple of fast movers. But you will see me make a mistake here. Unfortunately, I picked the wrong road. You need to do a particular fast move trick in order to get your vehicles to go to the road which leads directly into Bravo. That's not what I did. I made the vehicles fast move and, uh, well, that's going to come at some expense. Something else that I did here was deploy a couple of 10 RCs and they're going to go over, the, well, pretty much there where my cursor was, through the side of Bravo. They're going to sneak through the trees. And they are going to prove to be critical. Now, this is not a tactic I devised all by myself. No, this was created by Lord Pi. He recommended that I try this at some point. Um, and his coaching has been very, very valuable. So, Lord Pi, if you're watching, thank you very much so far for all your help. The plan for me to go to Charlie is uh, very, very light. It is just going to be a little bit of infantry, a reconnaissance unit, and, well, that's about it. The main offensive is to go to go into Bravo and a very small defensive force far to the right into Echo. Now I have a, a different composition here. Um, as opposed to usual, I am not playing my Baltic Front or the USSR that I've been testing. I'm playing Eurocore, as you can see. So we're going to go with a couple of Rima and Legionnaire into Bravo. Also a couple of guys from uh, the Panzer Grenadiers in their Mortar 2. What I am sorely lacking here is a tank. And that's a mistake. Because without a tank, if I encounter a super heavy on their side, I'm going to be in trouble. Fortunately, I have my AMX-10 RCs. And while they are not strictly a tank, they can at least do quite a bit of damage against incoming transports. And once you have knocked out the transports, the vehicles, or rather the infantry that comes out of them, now, I've cut a little bit out of the video here because we were just waiting for the guy to deploy. So you can see moving guys over as quickly as possible. And the MX-10 RCs are going to go there and then there. Note that position because it is going to be very useful. Moving over the forces to Foxtrot if I can get there, but I decide Echo is a bit safer. I don't really want to be focusing too much there. What I'm doing here is dedicating my forces to different positions, but I was not planning on having them on that road. They were supposed to take the road slightly to the left. And that's the problem. Because now I'm going to encounter the enemy. And it's not a bad thing that I encounter the enemy, but my forces are kind of, well, they're kind of stuck as they are. Um, and I run into a Kiyu Marushiki. And that thing is not going to take any prisoners and will very quickly start wiping out vehicles. Fortunately, however, I'm able to get quite a few of my infantry into the buildings, especially the command of para, and they will prove useful. Dropping off the martyrs as quickly as possible and pulling the others back. The MX-10 RCs on the far right are still moving. On the far right, I also have my legionnaires in contact. I just park them there and well, that's basically all that I need to do. Get the mortars back, get the panzer grenadiers offloaded, and the only guys from my initial push that made it to the town are the command of Para. So how do you get rid of a Kiyu Marushiki? Well, at the moment, without buying a plane, I don't really have a quick option. So, okay, let's buy a plane. And I really want that thing dead, but there is a smoke screen around. And of course, that tank, if it sits or falls back into the smokescreen, I will miss. I barely have vision on it, but I decide to go for it anyway, because I think that that Kiyomarashiki is kind of a linchpin. It's what the whole strategy revolves around. So if I can take it down, that would be a major help. And I get hits, <clears throat> but no kill. 
The thing is down to two hit points. Which, fortunately, is enough to kind of persuade it to pull back a little bit. And even so, it doesn't really have that much smoke coverage to work with. So, there's no smoke, there's no real good coverage. Then it's time to bring out the French. The Amex Tenor sees from the side that I was sort of saving for a moment like this. Unfortunately, I can't find it. It pulls back into one little strip of bushes. And immediately gets smoked up again. So I gotta say, this guy was doing a good job smoking up his defense, or smoking up his uh, super heavy there. Commander Paris still in contact. Um, another mistake that I make here is I'm overall too zoomed in. I barely know what's going on on the right. Unfortunately though, uh, the Legionnaires are able to secure that side. And I think that this player that I was fighting was so busy managing his super heavy and making sure it had smoke that he was not paying that much attention to the right flank. Now moving over the rest of the forces, some of my guys into Delta to try and secure the town over there and here comes an AGGM. Unfortunately by the way initially when I uh, took a shot at that Kiyomi Shiki, I lost the plane. But, here come his reinforcements. Four M36s and um, Kiyoroku. So that's more infantry. And I don't have any infantry at the moment. I have one Panzer Grenadier left. So I better intercept these guys. There's the Kiyoroku. And here is my flank. This is when the Amex Tenor Cs are basically given free reign to attack anything that they would like. Especially, especially a Kiyomarashiki. If I can get a side shot on that... I can kill it. And kill it, I do. So at this point, I probably wiped out most of his infantry forces here. I wiped out his super heavy. And he, I think, doesn't really see any more way to get to the town. I'm being even more aggressive in Delta, which, um, while it worked out this time around, but it was actually too risky. I should not have pushed as deep into Delta as I did. There's another vehicle coming up, another K1, and that's a bit much for an Amex Tenor C to chew off. Uh, he panic buys a Peace Pheasant to try and get rid of my Amex Tenor C, and he ends up killing one, but he pays for it with the loss of the F4F. Or rather, with the loss of the Peace Pheasant on the hands of the F4F. And there's the Tenor C, killing off another transport. My control over the middle is very, very shaky, but I can reinforce. And this is when he goes GG, and I win. Now, time for a little bit after the fact commentary. Um, the position that I wanted to put the Amex Tenor season was here, and eventually I ended up getting them there, which was possibly safer. But later on, um, after the fact, I fine-tuned this strategy, and... Lord Pi recommended that I bring two tenor C's and one infantry unit. And you're going to see me do this in a different game, in a different video that's coming up sometime in the future. This flanking maneuver allows you to cut off this road. And by doing that, you make sure that their flow of reinforcements to the town does not go over this road. And you just force them to use that one, which, for example, you can shut down with an ATGM if you have it. The rest of my forces, again, very, very light in Charlie, almost nothing going into Delta, but since I had nothing resisting me in Charlie, I decided to just make a move for it. Amex 1390 over there, Legionnaire over there, that was the plan. I just wanted to get Bravo and uh, just focus on that, which was another mistake. I did not really have an overarching strategy. It was not going to be like... Okay, I'm going to capture Bravo, I'm going to use Bravo to zone out the rest of the sector, and then I'm going to move to Delta. No, nothing so fancy. I just wanted to focus on one or two things in this gameplay, which was trying to play out or play a little bit more zoomed out. Make sure I got the Amex 10 or C's in a flanking position, and capture the bowling block over there. Now, what I wanted to show you in this video as well is that um, I should have fast moved them there. And then drove them into the town. What I did was just click fast move. And that means that they're going to use this road. It's not ideal. Because now you're on the wrong path. Quite literally. And this path eventually will get blocked. Especially once that Kiyu shows up. Now his opener. 
Uh, OH Ninja, he has a Kiyu, he has a K200 and two mortars. Uh, he bought a Hawk and a short arrow. I think the Hawk is a little premature. Uh, the short arrow I can understand because he's trying to make sure that I don't get any Hilo to attack his Kiyomer Shiki. And the short arrow outranges anything and everything. Um, then he brings ATGMs, he brings his reconnaissance infantry, he brings more infantry, and he even brings a quad stack of M36. I'm not exactly sure how to use those in a setting here, but maybe he had a plan with them. And then over to the north, we got the HMV and the Chugata, so that's another ATGM and recon. And this side, and this is actually something that I only saw on the replay, he has a KAFV-90, a KAFV-25, and a Humvee with another ATGM inside. And... This was, especially here, sort of hands-off management for me. Because I found that, yes, I was engaging something, which turned out, I think, to be the Humvee. Uh, yeah, the Humvee took some fire. But because he was focused around here, and probably zoomed in like this, he didn't even see what was happening here. And that kind of saved this group. Well, group, this unit. Because if he had seen this, he could have very easily continued all the way to Alpha and probably won this even faster. Rather than me winning the game, that is. Anyway, um, this is where I run into trouble. I get the Martyr 2s. Fortunately, they have a lot of armor, which means that they'll survive for a little bit. But even against Akiya Marashiki, they're going to struggle a lot. So... Time to drop off these guys was, well, it wasn't very good. I should have dropped these guys off before. Because right now, the Kimar Shiki is looking at them. And this thing, with 23 AP, will cut through almost anything. Here's his Chokyon Sa, his recon infantry. The Krotal has already taken down the ninja. And I think that caused a lot of problems for him, because he was blind. Yes, he had the Chokyon Sa. And he could see most of the stuff here. He could also see the engagement over there. But that was about it. If the Choki on Sa would have died, he probably would have very quickly lost vision on some of these units, especially the Tenor C, since they're medium stealth. I, on the other hand, could see with my Commando um, Para what his K200s and M36s were doing. The M36s, by the way, don't have a stabilizer. And I think it was at the hands of the martyrs that they very quickly die. Because not only do they not have a stabilizer, they also do not have any armor. So this was 40 points that he just kind of wasted. It does now return fire. <clears throat> I think it might kill a Vab? No, that was the Kiyu again. In the meanwhile, over here, the Legionnaire has been killing everything. His Chumat is dead, his, I think, KAFV-90 that he had is dead, and the KAFV-25 is getting worked over. Which means that this side is completely down. And over here... Um oh, right, I'm on neutral. This is where they went, Chugata and HMV. Now, this is the fight between the Sochong Su and the Commando Para. Kiyomaru Shika takes a big hit down to 2 health. He pulls it back, smokes it up. I think this is a great play. His ability to very quickly smoke up his tanks is something I still need to learn. I mean, I know how to do it. It's just that's something I don't do enough. And I leave my tanks out in the open too much, which leaves them very, very vulnerable. There, the Legionnaires just took out everything. And he keeps sending stuff towards the town. Which I think is fairly expensive stuff as well. This is a 15-point Kyoroku with uh, elite infantry inside. And here is more reconnaissance infantry. Because now that his infantry has died, his recon infantry that is, he can't see anything. And I can see his reinforcements come in with commandos. Unfortunately, most of my 10 RCs had died, but I had pulled one back. Or I got a new one, I'm not sure. No, this one has been firing, so it was definitely not a new one. You can see his new units come in, and that's when the Tenor Seas make their strike. This is when they make the move. And I think he was very eager <coughs> to use the Kiyomarashiki again. Um, 
I'll leave it up to the more experienced rank players to say if this was a good move or not. I'd say pull it back and repair it. But if he sensed that I was weak and had no defense against his tank, then sure, maybe it is a good move to try and push and try to attack. But once he popped out of his smokescreen, and I think he didn't even see that I had these, this. No, now he spots them. Now he sees them. But now it's kind of too late. Because what happened now is that these things are going to pop out of the woods. And they're going to start taking shots. There, that was a stealth shot from the 10RC at his Kiyomaru. He can't see it. He just can't see it. Here comes the Chugata. Over on the far side, which gets, I think, eliminated by the Vab. So a flank here is not going to work. He probably recognizes that with the Kiyomaru Shiki gone, um, the road is gone. And with that... It, well, it's not quite GG, but uh, coming back from this was going to be pretty hard, I think. And there you go. This is the Peace Pheasant. F4F comes in. There you go. He reinforces, but I think thinks the better of it and just decides to surrender. So there was a very, very quick minute or five minute game. Uh, the first one for me that I had beat so quickly. So I thought that was worth showing. I hope you guys are enjoying the ranked journey with me. Um, I am slowly but steadily starting to win battles, especially against privates. And this is largely thanks to um, coaching in the form of both Victor and Lord Pi and um, suggestions that I get from you guys in the comments and just getting more map knowledge, just playing. I would invite you guys to also try ranked. Um, it is going to be painful in the beginning. I, especially last week, put up that video where I got especially annoyed with all the things that I did wrong. You're going to take going through a phase like that and going through a phase where you learn the maps before it gets better. And if you're willing to put up with it, it can be this really, um, really intense, heart-pounding gameplay. Because at one point I was doing a ranked match and uh, I have a heart rate monitor. Normally my heart rate sits around 60, 65. Uh, but it went up to 120 just because I was playing a ranked game. Anyway, uh, try it. It, it is going to make you a better player. Especially if you guys can get support from some of the more experienced players. Uh, I would not count myself among those. I am very much still in the learning phase. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon for more videos.